Mr. Gregory Blair, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Wonderful. I can hear you. I'm loud and clear. Perfect. Papa, can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. So let's do our intro. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the fabulously talented producer, writer, and actor, Gregory Blair. Hello and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Before we get started, let me introduce my cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. I've never had you, but if I get myself to you, will you give me a part in the movie? <laughs> I've yet to uh, avail myself to the casting couch. So. Especially with an old bag like me. <laughs> Hold on, then we've got the man behind the boards. But I'll do anything for a role, anything. anything. <laughs> I've seen how uh, he can be seen, too. Everybody sees him, so yeah, that's working. Yeah, the girl good. before Sam. He's got the update. London. She was from London, and probably her equipment was backward. Or, or not. She had a phone. phone. Well, she was on an iPhone. But anyway, we want to, like, say, uh, actually, now and I don't want I don't want that to be in the TV show. Now we're going to redo our intro, because that's not a good thing for the TV show, talking about her. <laughs> Well, I didn't want to talk up. about catching this guy for a job either, you know. All right, all right, everybody. Now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the fabulously talented producer, writer, and actor, Gregory Blair. Hello, and welcome to the show. Hello, and thank you for having me. Again, and we want to introduce our cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. Just say hi. 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 <laughs> it's so nice that you joined us We'll put both of those today. in. It'll be fun. And then we got the so man behind. wait a minute. I understand there's a role you want me to play. <laughs> but listen, listen, I'll gladly do you a movie, but I never worked before 10, and I'm off at 4, and I need two hours lunch, and I need, you know, to... Uh, Use my own lyric uh, words because I forget. Um, what's what I'm? I forget scripts. Forget everything. Hold on. Anything, anything else you need, Gloria? You just let me know. <laughs> Norma Desmond, right? That was from uh, Sunset Boulevard. All right. I love got, that one. She did that little routine. We've got the man behind the boards, Mr. Chad Murphy. Gregory Blair, thanks for joining us. Good to have you. Oh, thank you. It's like the voice of God. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> then we have a chat room full of people, so say hello to everybody in the chat room. Hello, everybody in the chat rooms. There you go. Now you got it. So All now right. tell me, what kind of uh, movies do you produce? Because if I don't care for your style, I would never work for you. <laughs> oh, well, then you better tell me what style you like. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Actually, no, a, a silent movie. This way I don't have to remember the script. <laughs> Oh, well, I haven't done a silent movie as yet, but, you know, I got a few years, hopefully, left on in me. Um, what so doing? far, Seriously, what are you doing? Uh, I've done uh, a legitimate uh, horror, I should say, psychological thriller. That's Dead the Revisions. And then uh, Garden Party Massacre, which is a comedy slash horror. Emphasis on that I'd be I, good in. I actually noticed, though, like, because you're kind of like a the comedy horror king. Like, you have a lot of titles of comedy horrors. You know, you have horror horror, but then you have several comedy horror. Horror, horror. He's not a horror. Horror, whatever. He's not a How horror. do you say horror? Horror. How do he you say horror? horror. He's not as a long horror. as it has two syllables, I'm okay. <laughs> horror. Horror. It's not horror. horror. I know. I'm horror. from Florida. They don't say it that but, way. But, but I, when you wait. say whore. I didn't say it. I said horror. A, horror. He's not a whore. At least <laughs> how, I don't know that. <laughs> how do you say? You say, say horror. I say horror. See? Horror. But you say horror. No, I don't. Anyway, so you got a new one. Guardy Part in Massacre. It's a horror. Horror comedy. It's a horror. Yes. A horror comedy. And, it's a soft uh, word, horror. And actually, the website for it is GardenPartyMassacreFilm.com. And now, now, like, did you? I know you're in this. Did you also write it or produce it or anything? Because somehow I thought maybe you were a writer in it. I wrote it. I directed it. I am acting in it, and I also oh co-produced it. A quadruple threat. Oh, no, yeah, I wear a lot of hats sometimes. <laughs> yeah, quadruple threat. Barbara strikes in. In, in men's clothes. <laughs> <clears throat> she was the first one. She was the first one to do that, you know, and everybody bombed the shit out of her. They said, well, how can she write it, produce it, and star in it? Triple threat. It's horrible. Meanwhile, it was one of her greatest pieces of work when she was the, the they went to court. I think she was a lawyer and she was defending. Oh, Yentl. Not Yentl. That's when she oh, was. Oh, was that nuts? Oh, no. Uh, no, uh, no the C one. 
Remember? Oh, it might have been the one uh, as the tide rolls by or something like that. No, tides. tides. Oh, Prince of Tides. Prince of Tides. Prince there you of go. Tides. I thought she was. Nolte. I thought, yeah, I thought her performance was one of B's best. She should have got nominated for that. Don't you think? Do you remember it? Oh, well, she's extremely talented in many of her roles. Well, all of her so roles. So I'll, I'll, take, I'll, ta I'll take it as a compliment that I, you think I'm. Barbara Streisand in male clothes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the first I mean, time I've heard that one. Well, let me tell you something, Gregory. Uh, you know, I'm in the business. I've made films. I've been on TV. And I know what the deal is all about. And when one person directs and another person writes, another person, you know, it's hard for them. How the fuck do you do it? You're playing four roles. How do you do it without forgetting who you are, where you are, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, seriously, the script says one thing, you're telling the actor another, and they I mean, it's impossible. I don't know how you do it. I'm lucky I can remember my lines, and I'm not kidding. I think it's a combination of I'm naturally a little multi-personality anyway, so I think in my daily life, there are so many voices in my head that, you know, on set, that's not such a big issue. And the other thing is... When you are on set, um, you have a team of people who are each doing such important jobs, so you don't really have to worry about all of those. Yeah, pieces. but you have to you have to tell these people, you have to tell these people what to do. That adds another burden to you. You know, I went out with a, my last lover, by the way. He was he heard voices. <laughs> he was schizophrenic. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. <laughs> Just a joke, just a joke. Uh, all I'm, my I'm, friends. Uh, I'm feigning that. <laughs> no, all, all my friends that listen to this show, they, they know who he is. And they used to say to me, what the fuck are you doing with that guy? He's crazy as a loon. He used to sit there and just jerk his head around and look at this gorgeous guy. But wow. Anyway, you're not schizophrenic. We all make mistakes. What is yes. that? What is you're that? not schizophrenic. <laughs> You're just talented. There's a difference. <laughs> and you have a great sense of humor. And I could see the electricity in your personality. So you have a lot of energy, which is good. Like I'm still, I, I mean, I've made, as I said, I've made, you know, I was in a film with Sophia Loren and Tab Hunter. They in a shitty film. And the crew was like thousands. I've never seen such a crew in my life in Long Beach on a train station where my scene was. And it was amazing what, what everybody had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. How do you do all of that? Put it together, write it, put it together, direct it, produce it, and star in it. You're out of your mind. Actually, though, you don't. You're not the. Are you the lead? You're not. Well, actually, you have like an ensemble cast in it, right? An, so, like that particular film, yeah, it's an ensemble cast. So everybody's kind of. Are you of, a walk on? Are you just a walk on? No. Everybody's. All of the main characters are at the party almost the entire time, so they're all in the whole film, basically. Oh, that's, oh, that's, that's fun. That's a lot of work, Jimmy. That's fun. Trust though. Me. Hold on. So what we want to do? But though, wait a minute. How many salaries do you get? <laughs> no, seriously, he has to get he has to get paid for each. It doesn't thing he work does. that way when you're an independent film. You uh, don't get yeah, paid. I wish. <laughs> you don't get paid for each job you do. No. Uh, uh, there are circumstances where that would be true. That is not the case on this film. So, are you at the end? Yes. In fact, my editor just sent me a link to review what I hope is the final film. So uh, as soon as I'm done talking so to you, I'll be looking at that. There you go. So here's what I want to do. So we want to let people like uh, actually uh, see it, uh, the actual uh, trailer for it that you sent me. So Chad. Well, tell us it. about it before we see the trailer. I know, but first, first uh, Chad, you kind of get it ready. Tell us a little bit about what the, what the what, film is what's about. What's the scene about? Uh, well, it's a trailer. It's, a trailer. it's, it's actually just, it's a trailer. yeah. It's just a teaser oh. trailer to just sort of give you a feel for what the movie's about. And um, for anyone who is unfamiliar, it's about a friendly backyard gathering that goes awry when an uninvited guest shows up with a pickaxe and an attitude. So, oh, wow. It sounds like the parties like I go to. The vein of, like, Shaun of the Dead or Tucker and Dale versus the Evil. Very campy, funny, silly. It's all about just having a good time. You gotta love it. So As I said, I go to those parties. <laughs> Chad, <laughs> so. I, and, and some evil bitch. I won't use her name. She comes in with a hatchet. She chops everybody <laughs> yeah. to death with her tongue. Her tongue is her hatchet. Chad. Yes, sir. You got it. I do. All right, Gregory. You introduce the trailer, and then hang on. We're gonna play it for everybody. All right. So this is a garden party massacre where some people are the death of the party. Wow. 
you're invited to a party. Party Massacre. There you go. There you go, everybody. So that's Garden Party Massacre, which is not available yet, but I I think they have a Twitter. Do they have a Twitter? We have a Twitter. Um, we have a Facebook page. Uh, it's all the Garden Party Massacre. The okay. Twitter is like, uh, oh, gee whiz. What is it? G. Ha! Huh. I'll have to look that up for you. Real that's quick. all right. So all you got to do is go to GardenPartyMassacreFilm.com, and I'm sure the links for all the social media will be there, you guys. Absolutely. So go to GardenPartyMassacreFilm.com, and you're looking to release it sometime this year then, right? That's the goal, yes. We'll see. We're going to hit the festivals, and then, yeah, I have a distributor who's interested, so Listen, could be this year. Listen, we have a very dear friend, and she and her husband run all of the macabre uh, festivals on the East Coast, and her name oh, is yeah. Elsie, Elsie Macabre and Adam Ginsberg. Why don't oh, yeah. you, can't you know them? Send, send your film there because we go to all of those and I want to see your film. Oh, great. Yeah, I actually have a link for everybody on that uh, page that you mentioned, the Garden Party Massacre Film dot com, um, where because there are so many festivals and we don't know all of them. Yeah, but hers is, hers is good. Hers is East Coast. I gave away at the last festival uh, the uh, director's award. I gave away two awards and Jimmy did also at the uh, what was it called? Like the Academy Awards of horror movies? No, it's there. Like it's there. It's the it's, film it's festivals like a, awards for which yeah, films won all the different awards. Yeah, and I gave away for a awards. director, and I I found the director really to be a great director. And it's called so, the Macabre Fair Film Festival, right. and it's been going sure. on for about six Very years. Very high or end. You go good. and you sit down. And it's you gotten eat. better every year. It's really good now. And we were at the VIP table with all the great stars of horror. We was we were sitting with Jason. Uh, What's Jason's last name? Jason Finney. Finney. Jason Finney. You know who Jason Finney is? He won't know. Anyway, he's up and coming. And Ed, of course, my dear friend Ed. He won't know Ed either. Of course he would. Ed's made over 350 horror films. Ed's very famous. What's Ed's last name? (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's the age. He's so famous. I know him for years. No, he, he makes a lot of cool independent films. He's the tall. Jason Finney, you would know actually if you saw him because he was he's but like in, he's Ed, in Ed like is the guy Daredevil that, and all these different TV shows. Ed so he's is different. the guy that's all over Facebook supporting Trump. Tall, handsome, <laughs> with a beard. He's in Washington all the time defending Trump, telling us how America is going to be great again. Wait, you should you should have to, you should remember his name. I can't remember okay. my own name. All right, anyway, let's go to the next one. All right, so hopefully we'll keep you guys posted. Everybody, check out GardenPartyMassacreFilm.com. Then um, you want to. He's got another movie coming out. Actually, that uh, that sounds good, and I don't think this was a horror comedy. Is Deadly Revisions just horror, straight horror? Deadly Revisions is actually already out. You can, if you go to deadlyrevisionsmovie.com, there's a link where you can see a trailer and get the link to the distributor and, and get the movie or find a store. Can we see it on Netflix or Roku or anything? It is not on Netflix, but it's on, wow, I should have a list for you. It's on Hulu, I think. And oh, then we got Hulu. A, a bunch of a bu- it's on What's... a bunch of platforms. So yeah, you can stream it or whatever if you want. Okay. That's, that film's got Bill Oberst in it, who I, I know just because from meeting him at conventions, and it has Donna Lee Heising in it, which I guess yep. she's been in several of your movies, and she was a guest on the show like two we, weeks ago. We, we love her. Yeah. She's oh, terrific. we love her. We've kidnapped her. She's like our our, our kidnapped person. No, we love her. <laughs> 
No, seriously. She's coming to our house in Palm Springs for a, a good Italian dinner that I'm making because I'm crazy about her. She was one of our best guests. She was a lot of She's fun. Terrific. A lot yeah. of fun and just a sweetie pie. So also, hold on, you guys. So Deadly Vis Revisions is out now, and it's a psychological thriller about what happens when hypnotherapy brings horror to an amnesiac writer. Are the nightmares real or imagined? DeadlyRevisionsMovie.com. If it's done well, it's a good plot. It's a good plot. I love it. Was it done well? Tell the truth. I think it was done well. I, what I, I love what... about it is that uh, it's done in such a way that different people, you can take out of it what you want. Some people think it's a horror film. Some people do not think it's a horror film. They think it's simply a psychological, psychological thriller, thriller that has some horrific moments. Uh, right. A lot of people All don't agree on what the ending uh, is suggesting about the entire film. So there are all these, and then I put in a lot of, I don't want to call them Easter eggs because that's overused, but there's a lot right. of homage to uh, elements from previous horror films, not just um, elements like demon dolls and that sort of thing, but also to certain directors. There's a scene that when we shot it, I, I called it... Um, the the Brian De Palma scene. There's a shot. Uh, I know where, what Brian, Brian you know, does. Yeah, where I'm emanating. I'm sort of trying to pay my respects. Angie to Dickinson in a taxi cab. Remember, mm -hmm. Angie Dickinson. Angie Dickinson in the taxi cab taking her panties off. Remember, was the that movie. in uh, De Palma? Dressed, was De Palma dressed to kill? Dressed to kill. That was dressed to kill. One of De Palma's greatest films. That, that was, was that, that, that was like his best. Uh, the grocery store scene in the in the <laughs> museum. <laughs> that yes. was my favorite scene. <laughs> the end of it scared me to death when he's like standing there and she can see his reflection in the mirror. That, that just <laughs> yeah. we, 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 we support indie films and Jimmy is a great supporter of horror films. I'm a great supporter of documentary films. Uh, I love of documentaries, I could watch them always. The re one thing I don't like about most of the indie uh, horror films is corny and the horrible acting and the terrible timing. You know, when is the monster coming? <laughs> He's here now. Why do they do that? Are people stupid <laughs> that watch these horror movies? I mean, I've seen that in so many. I told that to Ed, my good friend, the actor. I said, you were in a movie. The movie was shot beautifully. It was a period piece with the coaches and the costumes. And who the fuck directed it? <laughs> oh, my. Look, the coach is coming. What are, you, what, what are you, like, brain dead? And he said, that's what the director did. And I said, what a pity that director shot that film. You should have had a real director. Not a jerk. He ruined the film, and it was a good story. It was a vampire film about the 18th century. God, what the fuck is Ed's name? And I love I him. Know. He said, dear, dear, <laughs> I have my brain, brain dead. I'm, I'm like brain dead. I really mean it. Either Age. Way, just so everybody knows, if you go to jimmystarsworld.com, you can actually, uh, they, they, we put up a link to uh, gardenpartymassacrefilm.com to, to see the trailer and also for deadly revision. So you can go to jimmystarsworld.com and click the links and it'll take you to see the uh, actual trailers of both the films. You have uh, you have 10 upcoming projects. So it, it amazes me how like all the people we've been having come on the show lately have so many like projects like in development soon to be coming out, uh, which is really cool. So congratulations on that. You have another film, and, and I only bring it up because Sean Whalen's in it, and Brad Potts is like a – I don't know how I know Brad Potts, but I've met him somehow. And it's called Ugly Sweater Party, which I'm going to assume is another comedy horror. I might be wrong. No, you are absolutely on the mark. It's a, it is a horror comedy. Um, it's hilarious. And it, I think it's going to be another one of those – Christmas cult movies, because uh, oh, there you go. I like the, co the horror comedy movies a lot. I really like that. I don't care for like the. Uh, we were gonna Jimmy and I were gonna be in one film, and Jimmy's arm was gonna be pulled out in a uh, butcher shop, and they were gonna prepare it for dinner. <laughs> and I thought, Jesus, Jimmy, I don't want to watch that because that's <laughs> gross and disgusting. I don't care for those kind of bloody... He doesn't like... I, I, I kind of like the torture porn movies, so no, I'm big into the hostels no, and the saws, no, but no. he doesn't. He won't watch any I of those. I find when they have to use 
you know, like some people say vulgarity in a film is because the film isn't good, so they put the vulgarity in to make the film spicy and better. Well, sometimes horror movies put all that blood and guts in because they don't have a story, they don't have good actors, and the camera stinks and it's a $10,000 budget, like the movie I was in that I will not give you the title. But it's, <laughs> but it's the greatest piece oh, of shit. Oh, no, no, no. It is the greatest piece of shit you will ever see in your life. I mean, I could have done it with an 8 millimeter camera in my backyard. It was that bad. But anyway, Anyway, no, seriously. Um, so I really respect it when they make it intelligent and scary. Psycho, Hitchcock's, will never frighten anybody. Nobody well, must be fr frightened like Psycho. And he if didn't it, do anything. You know, the knife never touched Janet Lee. Hang on, go ahead, go ahead. Right. No, I was just going to say, I think that you have to have a good story. If you don't have a good story, it really doesn't matter what you throw at the camera. So Blood, blood and guts. With that in with that in mind, there are people who there are people like you who really prefer uh, less less is more yes. because the less you see, the scarier it is. And then Absolutely. there's a whole fan base of people who are into the makeup and the special effects, and they like to see show me what you can do with your effects, and so they like the gore, and so you know you have to sort of decide. Well, which who's my audience in this movie? Like Deadly Revisions, because like I say, why that's more of a psychological thriller. The gore is pretty minimal. We kept it as minimal as we could, considering that you know there is murder <laughs> in the story. You have to um, also. But Garden it. Party Massacre, we sort of spoof the uh, the uh, what I find sort of the ridiculousness of some of the uh, gorier pictures. That's I'm going to watch it. I will watch it for oh, sure. So that makes it fun, though, because, like, you know, like, like uh, I, I, one of the people who, uh, who to me, makes, like, the worst movies ever, but they're so bad that they're good. You know, like, you know those movies that are just... Kill so, the Tomato, the, the Clowns. No, I, well, I was going to say, like, because, uh, like, Lloyd Kaufman, uh, we've had him on the show, you know, and those trauma films, they're really terrible, but they're so terrible that they're fun, and you can have a good time, because it's not like they're Shark serious... Sharknado? No, not Sharknado. Whoever, the, whoever, how, whoever dreamt that sharks <laughs> falling from the sky would be the best Actually, movie no, ever. the first one was good. I love Sharknado. It's so campy and fun. It's silly and it's delightful. Well, let's and I go enjoy on it. Like so, let's say because you're in a lot of horror films. Let's say though that there was a horror film in the past and you could have been in it. Like, what would be a film that you like so much that you're like, oh my god, I wish I was in this horror film? There's a lot. <laughs> I'll say, well, give me one or two. Give me one or two. Like my favorite movie, almost of all time, is Lost Boys. Like I think the Lost Boys was so much fun. Uh, and it and it's not really horror, but it kind of is horror. I mean, it fits in the genre uh, of everything. And then there's you know, I like all the torture porn, but I like all the traditional, like Pinhead and and uh, Freddy yeah, Krueger. At what and all age? That stuff. Now, I would have loved to have been in Psycho, and I would have loved to played opposite Tony Perkins, and I would have liked to have gone home with Tony Perkins after the day's <laughs> shoot. So, therefore, that would have been my film. You know, I met him at the Red Door Gay Bar out on Long Island many, 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 many years ago, and he was very uh, unattractive, skinny, broad-shouldered, and this weird. is giving you time to think of your answer, by the way. And weird. <laughs> and weird. No, Tony, And at that time, he was lovers with Tab Hunter. They were very great lovers for like three or four years. And uh, Tony was doing a film out there. I think maybe Desire Under the Elms. I'm not sure which one it was. And he was very, very weird. So Psycho was definitely for him. Because so, he could do okay, shit so, with his okay, eyes. Okay, so go things. to you, Gregory. Like, what's some of the, or what, just what are horror films you like a lot, whether you didn't have to be in them or not? Well, the one that came to mind, actually, was the original, uh, and we just mentioned Brian De Palma, Carrie. Because oh. there's so many great people in that cast. Yeah, it's a great if cast. If you have been in that movie and worked with all of them, that would have been pretty awesome, I think. Yeah, that was a good movie. Yeah, Sissy Spacex, first movie, really big movie, where her name went out. And John Travolta. Yeah. And what, Will, Warren, William Cat. There's a lot of people in that, yeah. Yeah. It's a did you like the remake that they did? No. Uh, it's horrible. Have, I've yet to see a remake that I like better. Thank you, thank you. Yes, they my do. Friend. I mean, the, one of the newer ones, they do are they're able to do a much better job with like the prom scene, crazy, yes. just because special effects have improved and blah blah blah. But as far as the the way the story is written, uh, the the De Palma one is just it's always uh, the winner. 
me. Fabulous. Now, since you're into comedy, what do you think of Betty and Joan? Have you been watching it? No, I haven't. Joan Crawford and Betty Davis? You haven't watched it? It's a riot. No, no, I haven't watched it. Oh, it's about Baby Jane. It's a camp. It's about the horror movie Baby Jane, which became, by the way, a money-making uh, movie. It was like a $70,000 budget, 65, I believe, and it made millions. Imagine millions of dollars. And you got Betty Davis and Joan Crawford for 65 grand. Were those the days, my friend? <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, with those the days, those two leading ladies. You so, can't even get, you know. Watch it. You'll, you'll enjoy it. That. You will enjoy. You will enjoy a Joan and Betty. Uh, it's yeah. campy. It's funny, and the way they did the horror scenes with Joan and jo and, and Betty are, are delightful. It's a fabulous. It is a good TV series. You have series. to watch it because yeah. you're into com horror comedy, and here you go. It's screening off the walls. Everybody's screaming about it in, in L.A. It's like the hit of the year. It is a lot of fun, too. The and Stanley Tucci, I mean, it's got a lot of really good characters. And Betty so. Dave, who I, Betty, who I knew. And Ryan Murphy did it. And Ryan, he's going to put together all the other diff different kinds of feud movies after this one because this one's doing so well, so you got to love it. But And Betty, right. Betty, for years, I've said, had the dirtiest mouth in the world, and nobody would believe me. And people knew that I knew her. You know, I knew her pretty well. We, we lunched a few times, and I went to a couple of her parties. And every other word out of Betty's mouth was fuck. I mean, she loved the word. So now in this movie, they portrayed Betty Davis is doing Baby Jane in the middle of a scene, and Joan Crawford walks in furious, and Betty Davis yells out, what is she doing here right in the middle of my fucking scene? So I was so happy that she did that because it, you know, it made me not be a liar. <laughs> But they all cursed in Hollywood in those days. They all did. The great ladies. Anyway, it's on Sunday nights, and you should check it. But let's also, you guys, listen up. If you want to find out what's going on with Gregory Blair, you can also follow him on Twitter. He's at the Gregory Blair. Um, what are some? What What do you got coming? Out, anything coming out really soon that we should be telling everybody yes, about? Yes, he's got a movie starring me. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, let's see. Um, on the Rocks just came out, uh, and that got great reviews. That is not. Horror. Horror at all. No, it's, and the uh, original, wait, the original On the Rocks movie was with Gloria Swanson and Rudolph Valentino, 1926. And this is nothing like that. And <laughs> you're, allowed, you're allowed to use that title because it's over 50 years. <laughs> this you can is use the titles anyway. Not if it's under 50 years, you can't. Yeah, you can. That, when did they change that? I don't know. That's a, you couldn't write the same script. No, no, no. You couldn't but, use the same title. No, there's all kinds of movies that have the same title if you go on IMDb and you plug well, them in. On the Rocks was that movie. Okay, so what's this On the Rocks? This one is a black comedy. That, uh, they, they've Somebody called it Altman on Crack, which I think is pretty appropriate. <laughs> and actually, it's star, one of its leading, its leading lady is one of my Garden Party Massacre actresses, Nicole Bagby, and she's... Hilarious oh, and go. brilliant in it. Uh, and I have this cameo as this obnoxious neighbor, which <laughs> they actually made a short film, and I played that same character. And so when he created the feature, uh, he Put you had in to it. come back to play that same That's role. That's nice. That's nice to do. I yes. like that. Um, yes. is, is there another best place for people to find out what's going on? I know the Gregory Blair because like, I'm on Twitter all the time, so I know people can follow you on Twitter. Is there like a website or face Facebook or anything yeah. for you personally? Yeah. Yep, there's a Facebook. It's, uh, what is it? It's just the Gregory Blair, the Gregory Blair again. Okay, so there you go. That's good that you got it. Facebook.com slash the Gregory Blair. Twitter's the same. Um, uh, of course, IMDb will list most of the films. Um, you go to the, uh, what else? I've got a Pinterest. Does anybody still do that? I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know I don't, how to do Pinterest. Only if you want to buy dishes and little lace work. <laughs> Actually, because you did a TV series, and I'm bringing it up only because we're gay. Uh, but you did, oh, you are. You had huh? You're gay. Yes. And, I'm uh, sleeping with no, a bag. No, and you uh, and you you did a TV series where you played a bunch of different characters according to IMDb. It's called Old Dogs and New Tricks: The Sex Life End for Gay Men as They Face Fifty. Watch Nathan Brad Muscles and Ross stumble through middle age in an alternate universe called West Hollywood. Which is funny, I think. Now, that movie all. we've got to see. That's a TV series, though, right? Where is yeah, that? Yeah, I think you can see that on the web. On the internet. We can watch it on yeah. the internet. Oh, okay. And so yeah. I think it's just fun that you were in it, because you really do have a... Oh, you were in the, in the film also? See, I had a moment there, a delayed moment, where my brain just goes to sleep <laughs> and it comes back. It does that all the time. 
But what, I, came Holly, in did, I came in and did some background and some small roles in a couple of different episodes. I used to hang out in West Hollywood. The, I, I used to hang out. You know how many movie stars I used to see that were gay that played straight? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. Oh, I'm telling you, especially in Mother, Mother Lode. They used to come into Mother Lode all the time. And in Revolver. Uh, the guy from Bewitched who played the lead, he was gay. He Darren. was there all the time. Yeah, all the guys. So many guys were gay. And, you know, people would say, no, no. Well, I just like the fact that you've done so many different things. You do horror, you do comedy, you do, you're do. you doing a lot of uh, all different kinds, so you're not really stereotyped and pigeonholed into the one thing. And, and, and a lot of times you don't see a lot of people who do horror and then also do comedic horror at the same time like there aren't too many people who actually do that so kudos to you on that and the fact that you know you're writing and directing projects and at least getting enough money to put the thing together and and, and get it put out well there. the best writer is mel brooks young frankenstein i mean now we're talking about major shit <laughs> mel brooks with young frankenstein and the other one that i love blazing Sa well that blaze Thing wasn't up, but but Frank Young Frankenstein and what's the other one he made beside another horror movie Frankenstein and another one I don't know uh, the one that makes fun of Hitchcock the bird and uh, yes is that I know I can't think of high either. anxiety high anxiety uh, yes and they're saying Dick York is the be bewitched lady yeah Dick guy. York he was quite nice very tall and skinny drunk but very nice. <laughs> No, he was you drunk. You hear it all here on the Jimmy Star well, Show. <laughs> you know why. You know why. Because what's the point in lying anymore? I mean, nobody's in a closet anymore. It's old hat. What the fuck is this oh, shit? What you're doing, baby? We have two minutes. Else? What about Ooga Booga with Karen Black? Is it a good movie or not? Karen Black. Oh, another gosh. one. I, I dated yeah. her. You know, my why I like that movie, and this is totally mm -hmm. an obtuse reason in a way, is because I always loved Karen Black. She I in love that her. movie spoofs. Her uh, trilogy of terror famous moment, uh, you know, with the Zuni fetish yes. doll, she spoofs that in that movie. So she's spoofing one of my favorite things she ever did in that movie, and I got to be in that movie. So to me, that's what, what I love. It, about wasn't her. she a sweetie pie? Uh, well, I wasn't in any scenes with her, unfortunately. Oh, oh. I took her to a, a friend of ours' house for Thanksgiving dinner. She needed a date, and she was just delightfully wonderful, Karen. That eye was weird. She had a weird eye. When you spoke to her, it was like almost not slow or something, but uh, I just wrote it, it, it down. made her attractive. I wrote it down on my list, so I thought we'd get it out there. So everybody, listen. But I up. loved Karen. Deadly Revisions is out now. Look for it online. You can watch it someplace. Uh, Ooga Booga with Karen Plack. You can find someplace. Uh, Ugly Sweater Party is also out someplace. You can. I uh, know. Not yet. Not oh, yet. Not yet. Oh, uh, no, sorry, that I messed that one up. coming out this year. That one's coming out this year. So is Garden Party Massacre. Um, check out GardenPartyMassacreFilm.com. Follow the social media. Follow at the Gregory Blair. We want to thank Joe Williamson for setting this whole thing up because it's time for us to go. And uh, in next year, I believe, the Macabre Film Festival will be in Penn Palm Springs. And I hope that your movie is there. And I hope when I give away an award for Best Director, Actor, all those fucking, Lighter, all those fucking titles you've got. <laughs> That you win all of them. So I'll have like five uh, in my hand. I'll say, oh, that bitch again. Here we go. Oh, here she is. Oh, I can't believe it. Another one for that fucker. Here we go. It'll be anyway, perfect. Anyway, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. So, Gregory, right. thank you so it's much fun. for See coming See you around on the show. town, Gregory. Take good care, baby. Okay. It'll be fun. Thanks. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye bye. Hey, everybody. Bye, Thanks everybody. so much. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in so much. We had a good time. Sorry for the technical difficulties. As next, always. Next week, we got Matt Martin and Christine DeBell coming on. It's going to be a lot of fun, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Oh. I'm a Liverpool MC. You can't trust me. Big up the girls inside the party. Let's get down to crazy Jimmy. Big up myself and all as I'll be the one and only the Turkish MC. Always have the clothes of Jimmy. British punk, yo, what I want to be. Jimmy Stark, new celebrity. We'll take you out.